Well, welcome back everybody. I recently did a video about my top seven strategies or top seven stand sites for killing big bucks with archery equipment. And today I really wanted to focus on my number one most effective and that's using fences, cattle fences to create structure on your property. Whether it's an existing fence or you build your own. And we talked a little bit about this in my top seven uh, video, but today I wanted to just cover fence crossings are good because they work. Whether it's a fence jump or the ends of a fence, maybe it's a gate opening, they work to funnel deer activity down in a, hunt in a huntable way. But even more so than that, they're really effective for me because you can build your own fence. And relatively speaking, it doesn't take a lot of time or money or effort to create your own fence, which is gonna create structure on your own property where you want it. So you can put a fence in where you wanna put that fence and maybe hunt the ends, maybe hunt a fence jump, and this is mostly effective, or more so effective, I should say, on properties where you don't have structure. Mainly it's flat land, a lot of, lot of timber, where there aren't a lot of funnels or draws or current fences or ditches or things to bottleneck those deer down and make it easier to hunt. That's why it's the number one most effective strategy for killing big bucks in my, in my book. So I wanna put this short video together. I wanna go out in the field now it's actually to my son's farm, central Wisconsin, and we're gonna go over really kind of how to make one of these, because it's not that hard to create structure on a property that didn't have any. So I'm actually gonna get behind the camera. I'm just gonna ask him a couple questions about why he installed the fence here and how he made it, so that you get an idea of, of how we do these fences. So kind of briefly, what, why'd you even install a fence to begin with? So in this specific spot, my fiance and I had hunted this portion of the woods a lot over the last three years and no matter where we hung stands thinking that okay last year we saw deer moving over here we'd move over there strategically with the wind then we'd start seeing where we hunted the year before so you got like 200 yards here where it's just open timber nothing here there's no ups and lows or high spots it's not a funnel at all there's really no way to understand where the deer are going to be going and i tried doing that with food plots to get them to congest down in one area and that didn't really work. So the solution was I did about 200 yards of fence, about 60, about 60 yards that way, and then 140 yards that way, basically to the end of where I own the property. And basically what that does, and you can see the height, the height of the fence here, is still jumpable for a deer. It's just that they don't want to. And basically every deer has to wrap around either that end or that end now. So this um, is, for people who don't understand, this is central Wisconsin. And this is flat. This is basically flat land, swamp, popples, maples, oaks, and there isn't there isn't any kind of structure that you would see with hilly country, correct? Correct. So the main thing I wanted to focus on, to be honest, other than price, because I'm I, I did not want to spend a lot of money. So you can see this is old rusted fence that I bought used off of Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or something. All the cedar posts I bought from a guy at work. We cut the trees down and everything. He, him and his brother debarked them and I, I mean, I didn't pay hardly anything for them. All the T-posts I scrounged from neighbor farmers and stuff like that. So other than price, I wanted it to also not be a deer fence, like a, a fenced in deer farm fence where it's eight feet tall, where a deer no matter what can't cross because it's, it's taken a little too far in my opinion, whereas this kind of guides them around the edge. So even though it's the point is to only get them with two different spots, whether it be the west end or the east end, they can and they will jump in any spot. So you're basically simulating a cattle fence, but because there are there isn't any cattle in this country, you're basically yes. just installing a cattle fence where there is no cattle. Yeah, so instead of improving a fence, which I know a lot of people do already, is there'll be an old existing fence that's dilapidated or falling down or whatever it may be, and then they, they go through and they replace it a little bit. I basically cut as straight a line as I could along the 40 line here. So this is a corner of the property actually, but this is a 40 width here. And I only did about half of the 40, but that gave me an opportunity to hunt the east end and the west end of the property with opposite winds. And then I could stay along the neighbors where every deer over here, I basically kind of gave up anyway, because it's the neighbors anyway. So I stayed two feet in from the fence line, to make sure I was on mine. And then I basically gave that up with the intention of just hunting the ends. 
talk a little bit about what kind of fence you used and why you and why you use that fence so like i said before other than the price because i got this stuff very reasonable i i looked for a number of months during the winter period before i started working on the fence um this stuff is much easier to install than a barbed wire fence i don't have any fancy equipment or anything for installing fence and i put up 200 yards of fence in a day by myself and that's all i did was roll it out on the ground flip it, flip it up on one end staple it in and then pull it tight with a chain fall on the other end and i mean it's other than cutting the trail and pounding in the fence post it took me three hours to hang the fence by myself um so this this is already four feet tall so i didn't have to add anything above it i didn't want to go any higher than that i added this barbed wire thinking that that was going to give it some structure between the t-posts because i only had so many t-posts um i don't think the barbed wire did anything so it's kind of a waste of time but that's why i went with this mainly because i found it and it was cheap and it's way easier to install and it's already you know i mean impenetrable for a deer i mean nothing's going to go through that other than small critters so if you ran if you couldn't find that woven wire and you had to run all barbed wire which me and you have done in the past where we fixed up you know barbed wire fences what what kind of suggestions could you give if you only have barbed wire what do you have to do well your your spaces have to get and especially down low i mean i think a lot of people have seen that before too with fences and you and i have seen it a ton that down low your does and your fawns and everything are going to go underneath the fence or through it so you got to keep your barbed wire strands tight so even if you only want it you know four feet tall ish or you know chest level whatever you're going for just because you can achieve that with five strands for what you think is a good fence that might be fine for cattle but for deer you want them tight because a doe will go through it a buck might not because of its antlers but if you got does going through the middle of your fence and then your bucks are trying to follow them and your stands are on the ends i mean it's going to screw up your hunt they're going to jump i mean that's so if it's if you're using barbed wire and they're not close together and they're not tight does are just going to end up crawling through them yeah i mean that's been our experience we did that on a couple on a couple other farms we've hunted in the past when we we built barbed wire fences or it was old cattle fences i mean you can see that those are just going to go through wherever they want because they're just going to slide through or slide under and the bucks are going to do whatever they can to follow them if it's that time of year and they're just going to jump the fence 80 yards away from your stand and then the fence doesn't do you any good so that pretty much sums it up the reason why we like this woven wire is because deer have a hard time going through it especially your does and fawns which means they wrap around, which means the bucks are gonna wrap around if it's during the rut. The issue with this spot, it was the same thing. Anytime my fiance or whatever try and hunt this, it was always unpredictable of when you would when you would see or where you would see the deer. So this one's only about 70 yards long, so it's not as big of a fence. And I did this one before I did the other fence. Um, I had these spools of barbed wire laying around. They were actually they were brand new spools that I bought off of Facebook for really cheap or something. But um, this one is all barbed wire and I did seven strands and it's not as high as the other one. The other one goes about just below my shoulders. This one only goes to about goes maybe six inches lower than the other one. But the, the strands of barbed wire are really tight. And then anywhere where there was slight low spots in the fence, um, I actually just rolled logs up to, up to the fence. And that was actually when him, when dad and I walked this down for the first time, um, that was the first thing he said was there's a couple low spots that might be an issue so i just took some of the logs that i had laying around and rolled them up to it that way those couldn't go below it this one was a little weird because what we thought was going to happen didn't really happen and sometimes you got to play around with it and kind of see how it goes after a few years this fence and the other fence have only been installed for a year and i thought every deer would end up on the east side because that's kind of what they did naturally and then when I put the fence in, every deer ended up traveling over here. And I don't know if that's because the switchgrass was finally at full maturity, so there was a lot more deer bedding on this side, but every deer ended up going either right on the edge here through the woods or on the edge of the switchgrass. And so the stand that we hung on the east side is now gonna get moved to here. And then I put this mock scrape up halfway through the season and this got hammered too. So the, the plans always change a little bit and you kinda gotta roll with it. Um, but that's that's what we found is you're making these little these little I mean 
This one's only taking a 70 yard swat and it's dumbing it down into two areas for you to hunt. It just makes it that much easier to know that, okay, they're gonna be somewhere within this 30 yard end. But the bottom line is you had 100 yards of movement. Yes. That was random and it was yeah. difficult to play the win. And then by installing a fence, now you force them on the ends. And even though you're not forcing 400 yards of movement down, yes. you're forcing 70 yards of movement yeah. down and now you're playing the end. When you have a piece of property that's the hardest to hunt. So like flat land, very little structure, very little things like inside corners or cattle fences or draws or ditch crossings, but you find a lot in areas like central Wisconsin or Michigan, parts of Minnesota and even Iowa, that installing a cattle fence, you know, a cattle fence, even though there's no cattle, is what gives you structure where there wasn't any before. So show them just show them just a little bit your barbed wire fence here, if we can. Because so this, this is different now. This isn't woven wire, this is barbed wire. This one, this one is seven strands, and it's about six inches apart between the, between the strands. Um, you gotta get them really tight. I mean, probably use another tightening job. But I, I ended up using the same chain fall I used on the other, because I don't have a barbed wire tightening system or anything. So I ended up just doing one strand at a time, tightening it with the chains fall, stapling it to, got some railroad ties from a neighbor for cheap. And that's, you gotta make it tight and you gotta put the strands tight together for barbed wire. And you can see this one's not as tall, but then again, I want them to be able to jump it if they need to. But I'm, the goal is to get them to go on one end or the other. 